Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how um, the crochet cipher code reveals some more messages from the Voynich manuscript. Okay, so um, I've been using this book which has got photographs of the actual manuscript inside it and I've been following the same methods that I did with the other one. Okay, so for this particular video we're just going to be showing you. So these are the pieces. So um, I'm working on page 47 and 42. I've already done page 42 where I shared with you how to crochet the eight-pointed star, which has got nine rounds. Okay, um, so what you do, so or what I've been doing anyway, is there's clues inside the manuscript. So you find how many um, leaves there are, how many flowers there are, things like that. And from the eight-pointed star, what we did is once I found all of the numbers, I turned them into letters and it created the word films. Okay, which I then shared with you that the, the archaic terms of that was meaning threads. Okay, and so for page 47, which is the pentagon there, that the, there we've got bake and the letter G. And for page 42R, this is the unusual square, so I'm calling this um, for that one there. Okay, and on page 47 is a hexagon. And so what you do is you get all the letters, you turn them into, um, the, it was called an ivory grid in the other one. So you, what you do is you make it, so it's like a word search. You put all the letters together so that they actually do create the, the, the words. And this one has got Elizabeth, which has still got the S inside of it because in what was happening is there was changing the alphabet from 23 letters over to 26 letters so if queen elizabeth the first used the z as it was going to be 26 so it arched along so if you use 26 it was going to kind of give some of the game away the message is to king james and the message says chef hid the bag it in back keg now, the way that I got that was I did have to change the H by using the other code where you break it up into portions. So we've got the letter I and the letter T. So that's why that's in pink there. And the F there, to make it make sense for the code, you have to turn that into an N. Okay. So what I did is, did what I did with the other ones. So I'm just going to just lift up my page and just share with you. So we actually created the letters. So we can see we've got James. And she did actually do the Z, the S, <laughs> like the like a Z, yeah. Um, so you could tip it over, so it turns into a Z. But the letter A um, was the special part of this one. So if you count up all of the blocks on James, it creates sixty six of these blocks. So these, these look there that is clustered as one block. Okay, the sixty six of those blocks with the letter A. Um, there is actually 15, but if you turn the letter A that way around, it creates the V and the 1, which is King James the Sixth, because he was King James the Sixth of Scotland, and that has 15 letters, uh, 15 blocks, sorry, okay? So if we put all of those clues together, what we end up with is we've got the 15 from the letter A, or the um, symbols for six in um, <clears throat> Roman numerals. So that's 15. The letters were 66. So that means 1566, which was the year that King James was actually born. This unusual square had to crochet to 10 rounds. The star, which I've already showed with you, had to crochet to nine rounds. So 10 plus nine is 19. OK, we've got six points on the actual hexagon. And we've got five points on the actual pentagon. OK, so on the... So you add these together, so 10 plus 9, so on the 19th of 6, so that's the 19th of June, 1566 is King James VI's birthday. King James VI of Scotland, who became King James I of England. And we've got five points on the pentagon, which is five letters to his name. Okay? So I carried on following the, um, the clues that I've been having to do. So this is the unusual square just um, to this size what happens is you if you cover it over the grid and it actually leaves you with the letters which then actually you can turn into a crochet pattern which reveals the four post granny square okay so i was 
thinking about all of these, putting all of the pieces together. And what you can do is you can put all of the pieces together to be able to make the 3D shapes. So you've got the four post square and then we've got the hexagon there. This is the one with the pentagon. I've done one with the star, which is um, very tactile, actually. I quite like the feel of that. OK, and um, then I realised as well what you could do is because you've seen the image at the front of it is you can actually turn it into a blanket as such but it also turns out to be a game board so you can actually have your pieces on the actual board so you'd actually be able to stand them up as well so which way around and so you can actually learn um so it was like kind of like baby chess <laughs> if you know what i mean or you can play other games um with that so you can learn the diagonal things and also all of these shapes are the times table so we've got the four times table We've got the five times table and six times table. And with the star, or that was the eight point star, we've got the eight times table. OK, so if we turn the blank, whoops, if we turn the blanket over there, then what we can see is that you get like these circles, which is then like the second game um, where what you do is you put your pieces over. Sorry, I've got all different, the different things, they're not all matching. But what you do is you try and do like tic-tac-toe where you get three in a row. Um, sorry you can't see the entirety of the blanket to be able to get that proper image okay but that is what is what I've actually been able to make from there um, oh sorry I forgot these frills round the edge here the holes through the square when I held those over the manuscript for when I actually made the actual square itself when it was put in the right place they actually revealed this pattern to do the edge which is the um, double treble crochet stitch in UK terms in the middle there which was Queen Elizabeth the first stitch from the other research that I've done this one ends up with 80 all the way around the edge if you make the square where you've actually made so this is kind of size for a cushion so you've actually got four of them all joined together and you add the edges on that you get 88 8 and 8 inside the Vornish manuscript is representing the um, double treble crochet stitch okay and so that was where I'd got to. So, but going back to the message, so we've got chef hid the bag it in back keg. Okay, so the chef is relating to Queen Elizabeth I because the book was called a recipe book, which is what they used to call recipes um, back in the day. Um, so the crochet patterns was called recipes, and um, so she's the chef. So she's hidden it. So back keg. If you use this method where you break the letters and rebuild them actually leads you to page two which I already shared with you I made a bag <laughs> so she hid inside the bag and um, let's just see I'm just going to get this out look so we're going to just going to get so it is the perfect size to fit in the cube which is two rounds of this pattern here which is the perfect size for you to be able to hide a little box I'm just opening it up so you can see so you can actually hide it like a ring box these, these, all of these, by the way, these was all designed to hide all of your tail ends when you make the blanket, which is what the films is about. It's just the threads. But inside the box, she could have then hidden a treasure. I've just put, um, I've just got one of these little, this is a beautiful little ring. I'll just take it out. It's one of those ones which you can open up. Um, and so she could have also hidden inside of it um, a teeny tiny hidden message for a next clue to be able to move on. Okay, so I was super happy with all of that. But then something happened because I was thinking about King James and his mum. So this is um, this is a cipher code from Queen Mary of Scotland. I've got this from the National Archives website. I took a photo through my tablet. So sorry, it's a really bad photo. But what she was doing, she was using the symbols, so different numbers, different letters and everything to make new codes. You know, like with the cipher wheel. So you, 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 you use something else to mean something else. And this is where I then got um, the biggest clue. <laughs> so she did something which I have not, not, not realised that was done in the 1500s. So on what she's done is so she would use that one letter to represent two letters or use two letters to represent one letter. And at that point, that's when I actually um, I tested it out with the manuscript. And now I can actually turn the... 
the symbols from the out from the Voynich manuscript into English letters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do. I've got three more videos planned, so we're going to have a short video where I share my first ever words. <laughs> I'm so excited. Sorry, <laughs> my first words that I've actually been able to read from the Voynich manuscript into English um, language. This um, and I also share. There's, there's there's actually a new pattern as well with that. So that's a beautiful pattern. So. Um, yep, yeah, hope you like that one. The second one is actually, I've revealed some more words and they're actually a clue to be able to trace, to be able to go somewhere else. And then the th the next video, that like my final conclusion video, is a video where, where does it all lead to and we get to a conclusion, okay? So if you do want to um, make any of these things, please write it in the description box. This is this is the um, the cushion. I'm sorry, uh, hopefully on the image in the beginning of it, you're going to be able to see better um, what these actually look like. The bag, obviously, I've already made. And um, if you want to make... So I've also... Oh, actually, let's bring over the little one. I've done a little version, so that's easier to see. You can see what it kind of looks like when it's all together. OK, and these sit nicely so that what happens is, is you know, that is shapes. They sit, the actual cube fitted perfectly um, into those squares. OK, so um, I think that I've covered everything. So there we go. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. I do hope that you'll come and watch the next videos. OK, thanks. Bye.